And may I now invite Reverend Father Thomas Kolumbarambil, Professor of Theology at the Bharamidya Kshetram, to make his first presentation on consecrated life and the synodal building up of the church. In fact, Father Thomas Kolumbarambil, who holds his MST in Syriac Studies from Oxford University and his PhD from Lateran University from Augustinian, Augustinian in Rome, has been teaching at the Maram Dakshetram for about 30 years. And he has been the Dean of the Faculty of Theology and the President of the Maram Dakshetram. At present, Father Thomas is a member of the International Theological Commission at the Vatican. And he also is a member of the Office of the Theological Concerns under the Federation of Asian Church Conference. He is nominated to be a member of the Theology Forum of the Thirumalabar uh, Church as well. And Father Thomas, at present, is also serving as a member of the Theological Commission for the Synod of Bishops, which in fact has initiated the process on synodality. May I now request Father Thomas Palabramil to begin his presentation on consecrated life and the synodal building up of the church. So, good evening and Welcome to one and all. Thank you, Father uh, Saju, for the lavish uh, introduction on me. And uh, uh, let me start my presentation by presenting uh, some of my uh, slides. Uh, hope you are uh, seeing my slides. Yeah, let me continue with my presentation. So this is the initial slide. Of course, uh, just to introduce, are you seeing the slide? Yes, Father Thomas, please proceed. Yeah, this is the second slide because uh, SMRC is conducting a symposium, synodality and a consecrated life and ecclesial response. Now, my presentation is titled Consecrated Life and the Synodal Building Up of the Church. So, uh, we have some presuppositions. Number one, we are learning together. It is not the case that uh, I am uh, speaking and uh, teaching you and you are learning. We are all together learning uh, in a synodal manner. Number two, we have seen already the preparatory document and the what I, make, what I make made available all throughout the world. Then number three, uh, we have to evolve new ways and styles of ecclesial life. Uh, in order to answer to the science of the times. It is not to make a theology or dogmatic presentations. Number four, Second Vatican Council had given uh, orthodox teachings. Correspondingly, we need orthodox uh, behavioral patterns, styles in the, uh, in the ecclesial level, uh, explaining the communion, participation, and mission levels. Now, when I speak about the uh, some uh, Sura Malabar Church and her synodal roots, we have to remember one particular uh, fact that is Marthoma uh, Margavum Varibadum. Because the way of uh, the rule, uh, uh, the rule of Thomas or Varibadum means uh, it is the proved way, mature way through which people have already journeyed. So uh, this itself can be taken as a theme because we had a good uh, uh, elements of uh, a synodal way of life. And today, when we are considering synodality and the consecrated life, we have to remember the outcome of a Lumen Gentium chapter 6, Perfecta Caritatis and Vita Consecrata as a fruit of the Synod of 1994 and the Apostolic Letter of Pope Francis, uh, for the year of consecrated life. We have to gather fruits from all those previous teachings. Now, from the beginning of the church, the synodal mode is the form, style, and the structure of the church. And consecrated life also follows the same mode, the mode of a synodal uh, way of life. And my present concern is to show that uh, the consecrated life is also having the same mode, uh, uh, mode of the form, style, and structural functioning. So I will be just presenting those matters uh, slowly. Now, synodality has to be the form of consecrated life. 
and the form is a trinitarian communion life when i speak about the trinitarian communion life uh, we have to take into consideration the eastern theology and the eastern understanding of anthropology also uh, human beings are created in the image and likeness of the trinitarian god and therefore human beings have three components body soul and the spirit and towards this body soul and spirit the uh, the tripartite uh, uh, human person there is the divine trinity so there is a correspondence between divine trinity and human trinity uh, as a result when the spirit is in agony the father is active in the human person or in the human community human community because each human person is having three components similarly each human community is also having its own body soul and spirit that's why when the uh, spirit is in agony the father is active in the person or in the community and when the soul is in pain the son is active in the person and in the human community and when the body is burned with the suffering uh, the spirit is active in the person and the community this concept we are uh, 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 having the journey of humanity the church is making a travel or flying through the history of humanity with the, her own two wings charismatic wing and hierarchical wing charismatic wing is uh, the people of god having uh, their own uh, gifts and charisms given by the holy spirit and the hierarchical wing is actually the warning and guiding and the serving the charismatic wing and the consecrated life functions from the charismatic wing of the church all the consecrated people are on the charismatic wing but uh, open to the hierarchical wing now consecrated life has to be accepted as a crown of ecclesial life in all levels of the church consecrated form of life is in the heart of the church as it is close is a close and radical following of christ and consecrated persons signify the inner nature of christian calling a universal call to christian perfection as taught by vita consecrata number 3 as a result consecrated life is a sacramental presence of the kingdom of god in this world now consecrated communities are doing apostolic evangelical service and not primarily mere civil services all our ministries are civil services in a sense but beyond that it has to show the uh, flavor and sign of evangelical services and consecrated communities have their inner rightful autonomy in the church and it pertains to the canon law but the consecrated communities are under the common ecclesial and civil laws as well as the national and cultural ethos and among the in the community or among the consecrated people functional groups are needed but individualism false groupism formation of counter groups etc are against the spirit of communion in the consecrated community and the communion at large in the church uh, the church and the consecrated communities are governed by the risen lord and the holy spirit through the medium of uh, human persons it is not meritocracy that is ruling the church or the consecrated community but selection and anointing by the spirit that makes one as the governing hand of the divine in the human society so that has to be noted uh, guidance of the lord and the holy spirit are prominent above all and with regard to this uh, there are two uh, scriptural episodes number one naaman Naaman from the Old Testament. He was uh, the army general of Assyrian army, a very powerful and able personality. But he had uh, leprosy, so he uh, he sought medicine from all possible corners, but could not uh, so uh, cure his uh, leprosy. But uh, one of the household maids, a Jewish uh, servant. told the wife of naaman that there is a prophet called elisha if naaman goes to elisha he will be cured but naaman was uh, reluctant to go but on, uh, because he was not able to solve his problem 
Naman yes. finally uh, yes. decided to go to Elisha yes. with all his pomp and yes. with so many gifts to be given to Elisha. And when uh, he reached the house of Elisha, Elisha himself did not came down. Elisha sent a servant to Naaman and told him he has to go to the uh, river Jordan and uh, take bath seven times. Then he will be cured. So Naaman expected a great reception and uh, direct presence of Elisha. Naaman became quite angry at that time. Still, uh, some of the soldiers, uh, faithful soldiers of uh, Naaman, advised Naaman to do that. Perhaps it may uh, function. So Naaman, after having uh, re uh, removed his uh, uh, pomp and his arrogance, went and washed himself in, in the river Jordan seven times, and he became cured. Because the Holy Spirit is functioning through different channels. Uh, his Pomb has to be removed. His arrogance has to be removed. So also Saint Paul, he was very powerful. See what happened on his way to Damascus. He has to be, uh, he was uh, falling down and initially he, he could not uh, see the direction. Finally, uh, he has to uh, uh, take the direction from other people. These are all reminding us about the need of uh, waiting for the direction of the spirit uh, through the coming together and other people. Number two, synodality has to be the style of consecrated life. So it is actually covenantal participation and washing of uh, others' feet. In the consecrated life, one is entering into a covenantal life, a participation with God and with other human, uh, humans and, uh, and the world situations that are around us. This style of life often calls for mutual washing of the feet. One cannot be part of the covenant if one disregards mutual uh, responsibilities. Uh, one's covenant with God is made evident in the vowed life. And uh, there, are, there are many ways of uh, uh, living the, vowed, uh, the vows. There is a legalistic vowed or promised life as well as the sacramental vow or promised life. So we have to go for the sacramental mode of uh, uh, leaving the vows or promises. And washing the feet of others should be just and dignified rather than any play for undue profit taking selfishness in the community and in the church. Because uh, uh, inwardly each consecrated community uh, have to be uh, mutually respecting and just in their behavior. And consecrated communities have their external relationship with the ecclesiastical authorities, civil authorities, people of God. They are also, they have to be quite ready to wash the feet of others. And here we have two types of washing the feet of others. Apostolic washing of the feet, and authoritarian secularistic washing of feet. And you know that we have to go for the apostolic mode of uh, washing the feet of others rather than authoritarian secularistic washing of the feet. And now in this respect, clericalism, authoritarianism, materialism, functionalism, professionalism, etc., are to be overcome so that uh, we have to attain the sacramental level. So we have the... Uh, uh, the teaching of Jesus, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Then individualistic personal agenda has to be sacrificed for the spirit guided agenda and building up of the kingdom of God. We have the examples of two episodes, the rich man approaching Jesus, and he was not ready for the radical following of Christ. And against that, we have the uh, episode of Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, she had doubts, but when doubts were cleared, uh, she was ready to follow the word of God according to the divine plan. So uh, she said, Fiat mihi secundum verbum tu. Let it be done according to your word. So that should be the model of uh, uh, the participation into the, in the divine plan, participation, the human plan of uh, uh, every consecrated community 
and every consecrated uh, congregation and uh, groups. Now, similarity has to be in the structured functioning of consecrated life. And, and the structured life comes only through synodal conversion. It needs inward conversion and outward uh, oriented conversion. And here, what is more important is transfiguration uh, as the main guidelines and dynamics. Uh, transfiguration of one's own self and the areas of environment of one's own mission in the world are the required goals. Now, precisely, the required goal is synodal conversion. So when the uh, consecrated are gathered together in community in the model of the upper room community under the leadership of Blessed Virgin Mary, there will be the infusion of the Holy Spirit so as to have the Pentecostal experience. And in any Christian gathering, the head and president is the risen Lord, and the inspiring and the energizing power is the Holy Spirit. So in all such a, uh, church gatherings, be it uh, uh, religious people or this hierarchical people, all church gatherings, above all, the reliable democratic provisions and findings, there should be the signature of the risen Lord and the anointing of the Holy Spirit as it was once given to the, given by the risen Lord to his disciples. So we are fun uh, functioning under the headship of uh, uh, Christ Jesus, risen Lord and the Holy Spirit. When hearts of the consecrated persons are converted, uh, the institutions and programs managed by them will gain uh, service-mindedness rather than authoritarianism. So actually, uh, the need is uh, a conversion from authoritarianism to service-mindedness. And it is in the synodal gatherings or in any Christian meeting, the real conversion has to be achieved according to the inspiration of the Spirit. In the journeying together, constant listening to the Spirit is a must. The Spirit will suggest new and surprising steps in order to empower the mission of proclaiming the gospel. And the Spirit provides the synodal conversion in the mode of a progressive conversion. And by synodal conversion, the quality of ecclesial life would be improving. And growth in the quality of the style of ecclesial life would improve the mission of evangelization and the renewal of the church. So Christ is the head of the church and the spirit is the animator. So uh, which are the areas of uh, uh, synodal conversion that is quite necessary? Number one, uh, we have to believe that, uh, or we have to be conscious that the spirit is guiding the church throughout the history. And number two, the need is a participative and inclusive ecclesial life that embraces all. We cannot uh, uh, anyway marginalize anybody. So uh, our uh, salvation will not be complete without the salvation of others. That is the truth. We cannot uh, attain our salvation individually. Number three, recognize the, and appreciate the variety of gifts and charisms given to the people of God. And number four, committed exercise of the responsibilities. Our responsibilities may be simply nominally exercised. That is very minimal. We have to be totally committed. That conversion has to come. Number five, always exercise power and responsibility according to the gospel values through the given and developed structures of a church, structures of the religious congregation or society. Number six, create credibility for the church. Now the church is having a sort of a uh, lack of credibility or religious congregations or, or community, consecrated communities uh, may be having scandals and so many other difficulties. We have to improve the credibility of our life and our uh, behavioral patterns. Number seven, uh, create a relationship with other ecclesial communities and groups, uh, with other religious, uh, other religions, uh, civil societies, and other organizations. And only by that, the church, we ourselves can be salt of the earth and light of the world. And number eight, appreciate and appropriate all uh, good elements uh, from past synodal experiences. Because in the Eastern churches, the synodal experience is little more higher. And especially the 
uh, Syrian Syro Malabar religious congregations and societies have their own uh, more and more proved and approved mode of life. That is what is called Marthomide Margum Varibadum. Things are proved and mature ways are with us. Now, it is through the synodal conversion, the needed renewal and updating of the church are taking place. Such a constant renewal and updating are envisaged by the Second Vatican Council. So thank you so much for associating me to this uh, 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 webinar. And I thank one and all, especially Father Saju and all the uh, office bearers of SMRC. Thank you one, uh, once again.